Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to create a multi row header in Breakdance in a way that would allow us to hide some of the rows on Sticky and show some of them on Sticky. This sort of header can come in very handy to show several information on your header without cluttering or taking up all the space and you only show those information when they are absolutely necessary. And I'm not saying that uh, you're going to actually build a header like this on your website where you show up to three rows. But what I'm saying is that you're going to learn how to actually hide any row you want to hide on Sticky and show any row you want to show on Sticky, even if you want to make it two rows. So let's head over to Breakdance and start. So the first thing I'm going to do is to create my header template. And to create my header template, you have to go to headers and then you're going to add a header. And then you're just going to call it any name you want to call it and apply it to any way you want to apply it. Let's say um, maybe on media or for, for the purpose of just demonstrating, I'm just going to say search results so it doesn't overwrite what I'm doing. And then, uh, then you're going to edit with breakdance. And once you go edit with breakdance, you're going to have this. So you're going to learn here. And then the first thing is just to add uh, your header builder. So I'm just going to type header builder and add it. And on my header builder, I really don't need to set any uh, background. Now the background you're seeing here is the background of the web, the whole site. So that means the header here, the header builder doesn't have any background. Now the first thing I want to do is to go to layout and I want to start um, vertically at, I want everything to stack vertically at desktop. And that is because the header builder by default stacks things horizontally. And then I'm going to set a gap of zero because I don't want any gap between my rows when I'm going to be adding the rows. And under size, I want it to be full width. I'm going to set that to full width. And then under spacing for the paddings, I want to apply a, a zero padding to all. I don't want to have a single padding. And then I'm going to go over and edit uh, sticky, enable sticky rather. And then I want to have a shadow. So um, I'm going to go to style borders. And then I'm going to add a shadow. In my shadow, I want this to be 0, 0, and this, this could be like, say, 50. And I want to reduce that to, I think that is okay. So um, I think that's basically it for the settings on the header itself, the header builder. The next thing I want to do is to insert a row. And that row is going to be a div. So I'm just going to head over to add a div. The first thing I want to do is to go to the container and set that width to 100%. And it's going to fill up. And then I want to give it a background color. So for my first one, I want to give it, let's say, let's give it a light purple background. And then the next thing I'm going to do is to go to layout. I want everything that's going to be inside that div to be centered. And that is because I want to put another column inside that div because we have set this header to be full width in order to get our header to be the sites width we need to add this div to act as a container for our main container which is going to be a column you will understand as we go along and then for the padding i'm going to scroll all the way down here for the padding now because we have set this as a, a full width we need a padding that will act as the default section padding of the website and for that we're going to use a standard breakdown variable I'm just going to open a notepad to type out that variable for you to see. And that's going to be var BDE uh, section horizontal padding. This is a standard breakdown variable that takes care of the horizontal padding of the section, the left and the right padding. So I'm just going to copy that. And then I'm going to go to the padding for the left and the right. And I'm going to add it there. Add there. So we're done setting up our first row. So I'm just going to rename this to row one. And then inside that row, we're going to add a column. So I'm just going to add a column. Now you may wonder, why are we adding so many things? Now, this is going to enable us to have the effects that we want. And without doing it like this, it's going to be really difficult to control it. So I'm just going to go with three columns. And for this column, I'm going to call it hide on sticky. And then I'm going to give it an ID of hide on sticky. So I'm just going to go to advanced and come here. And then I'm just going to say hide on sticky. Just make sure you spell that correctly. I'm going to go back to layout and I'm going to go stack vertically. I don't want it to stack vertically ever. So I'm going to choose never. And then under the size, I'm going to go to the width. And now this is where things are get, begins to get interesting. Because we want the width to be a size width. Now, if we allow it to be like this, 
Now this uh, is going to stretch beyond the side width. So we need this column to be constrained to the side width. And to do that, we are going to use another standard breakdance variable, which is for the side width. And that is going to be for BDE section width. And that is a standard variable that controls the side width. So I'm going to take that and go to size width, go to custom, I'm going to paste it there. Now, because we have already set this row to align this to the center, so this will be contained in the center of the page and it's going to be the size width. And then the next thing we're going to do is to copy and paste a custom CSS. But before we do that, I'm going to duplicate these rows. So I'm just going to take this row one duplicate it. I'm going to call it row two. And for row two, I want the background to be white. And then this is not going to be hide and sticky. This is just going to be show always. And then I'm going to duplicate this again. I'm going to rename it to row three. And then for this, I'm going to say show on sticky. And then I'm going to give it an ID of show on sticky. So I'm just going to say, so it's already warning me that that has already existed. Then for this one, I'm going to go in and delete that ID because we don't need an ID there. So now we have our three rows. So for this one, I'm going to change the background to something like a light blue. So we have our three rows. Then let's start populating it. For this one, I'm just going to add the text. I'm just add a heading. And I'm just going to make it like just now these are not actual content. These are placeholders. So I can just make it any size I want. So I'm going to select that and just go to the size as um, layout settings and set that uh, like that. And then for the size, I think the size remains. Then for the spacing, I'm going to give this a two rem uh, bottom, bottom and top padding. And I want to do that for all of them except the one in the center. So I'm just going to uh, copy and then um, paste design for that. And they all have that two uh, rem. I'm going to just call this um, hide on sticky. And I'm just going to copy that heading and put here. And just call it uh, show on sticky. And I'm going to just put that here also. And I'm going to call this. Uh, let's just do that. Um, I think I'd like to copy and paste style here. And then this is going to be show all the time. Let me just change that up now. I'm going to select the height and sticky, go to advanced, and then I want to paste a custom CSS. Let me expand this and paste it. Now what this does is that it gives it a maximum height of uh, 60. And then now this you can always adjust. Okay. Uh, it gives it an overflow of hidden transition of four seconds. And then when the header is sticky, we want to give it a maximum height of zero and all the divs inside it, we want to give it the opacity of zero when they are hidden. But when they are not hidden, we want to give it the opacity of uh, one. So uh, you can see when I scroll, it hides it. I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to copy another custom CSS that is peculiar to this one. Okay. For this show on sticky. And I'm going to do the same thing. So what I'm essentially doing here is the reverse of what I did there. And you can see that it shows. Okay, uh, so one more thing I'm going to do is just to click here and add my logo, which is going to be an image. And let's select the image we're going to use. Just going to pick any image here and that should show. And then here I want to add my navigation, uh, which is going to be my menu. I want to use the WP menu. I know Breakdance has a lovely menu builder, but that's not the focus of this tutorial. So um, now I want this uh, middle header to be bigger. Okay. So I'm just going to select this and I want to go to height. So let's go to here, size, height. I want to set it to custom and I'm going to set a minimum height to say 100. Okay. Maybe if you want, you could make it 80. So depending on how you want it to be. 
So now we have that. I'm going to check the, first of all, I want to check the breakpoints because I don't want anything to stack vertically unnecessarily. We have set the stuff not to stack vertically. And of course, you want to make sure you use uh, your responsive typography. So, uh, of course, you're not going to have this kind of typography in the header. These are just for demonstration purposes. Okay. So I could always go into the size um, a typography preset and then choose something that is very small. Uh, let's see. Uh, where do I have something like that? And then I can just copy that style and paste here to have something smaller. So I'm going to save this and then we're going to look at it on the front end for the first time. Now, by the way, I'm going to link this CSS uh, in the description. So I'm going to link the one for hide on sticky and the CSS for show on sticky. So let's take a look at the front end and see how it looks. All right. So that is just like uh, the, the sample that we saw at the beginning of the video. And by the way, this page was created in Breakdance in a matter of minutes. I have a video of the build. Uh, this is an Elementor kit template, which was recreated in Breakdance. And you can see everything was done 100% in Breakdance. In this one, there was nothing like custom code. This, everything was just, you know, done directly with all the element, 100% breakdance native element, no code, nothing. All these effects that you're seeing here is 100% breakdance, 100%. And uh, yep, and it's, it's really cool. So I'm going to link the video at the top right corner and also at the card at the end of this video. And hey, don't forget to hit the like button. It's your own way of telling me thank you. And subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you don't miss other tutorials. I'm going to be bringing more interesting tutorials on breakdance so stay tuned until next time bye